Hello and welcome to another enthralling episode of Azel's TV. Today is part 14 of my wooden clock build. And I have all sorts of trouble with it. Oh boy, let's go. Okay, I've been on the struggle bus all week with this video. Many, many problems. Very few solutions. Let me show you what you've been up to so far. Problem number one. My lookup table goes in the range minus 90 on the left here to plus 90, with zero being a central position for the servo, so it will sweep like that back and forth. However, the servo object in Arduino uses the range zero to 180. So I have to add 90 degrees to each of the values to get the sweep. Second problem is, it's not exactly a center of the server when I put it in zero or 90 degrees as it should be on here. So I've had to add another offset. So it actually, I've actually had to add an offset of 100 degrees, which gets me more or less in the range I want, but it's still not exact. The second problem is the second servo has a slightly different range to what my lookup table uses. So I'm either gonna have to add offsets to scale it slightly or do a new lookup table. And I might have to do a new lookup table anyway and I'll come back to the reasons why in a moment. The third problem I'm having is how the servo moves in itself. I've got the 36 positions here that go from zero to 360 degrees in 10 degree steps. And I thought the servo would move quite smoothly from one step to another if it moved fast enough. And it sort of works, but if I, if I move the servo too fast, it's quite noisy, so I want to move it slowly. But if I move it slowly, it jumps still very quickly from each step. Which is exactly not what I want, it's very, very loud, and there's all sorts of resonances going on. I have to show you what I mean. Now if I use my potential to sweep program to move it, I can move quite smoothly quite slowly and it's not too loud so this server for example it will move that sort of path back and forth once a minute it's not too bad I've held this down with tape because if this allows to swing around this gets jammed, on, jammed up on everything and risks breaking it another problem is you can buy about it here is that now I don't know if that's a PWM signal or whether it's the fact that the Arduino is sending commands one bit at a time for the server, I don't know. I think it's more the server itself. So if I try and move it. Now it's a digital server, so it might be internally it's making that noise. I don't know. But if I move it fast enough, it sort of doesn't really notice, so that's something. I've written a sketch to move with this servo, the range of motion that's on my lookup table. So if I press this button, probably out of a shot on the camera. Here we go. If I press this, this does one sweep. And you can see how it does it in bits. It's not too bad on its own. starts to get pretty noisy. And this program moves both servos at the same time how they should move to rotate this round. And already there's a problem because if I try and put this linkage on this pin here, it gets quite upset with me. Because I think this servo is slightly too high, high up this way. So this linkage arm is slightly too long, effectively. But I can't make it any shorter, because what happens then is if it goes around this way, it becomes not long enough. So if I press a button now to move both servos. Yeah. 
So as you can see I have a problem with the range of values that's being sent to the servo. And I have no idea why, because it was working at some point. So somewhere between my code working and today, it stopped working. It's a case of it works yesterday, oh well. So if I use this sweep test with the potentiometer again, I can move it to that angle position and that's fine, you know, that's, how much, that's how much slack I want so this arm can start putting it back down that way like that however look it's, it binds up on the end there and it's using the exact same range of values that were previously working so I don't know what's going on so I'm going to have to scrap that lookup table and code it myself So no real doubt about it, I'm going to have to recalculate my lookup table and instead of 36 points I'm going to have to do the full 360 points which I'm really looking forward to. So to recap, here's the plot for the lookup table I did previously, I think that was episode 9. Looks nice and smooth but there's only these many points here. Now if I plot the points how they actually appear we get this because this gives a false illusion of smoothness because you're looking at the spaces between the points where actually, where actually you're getting this so if I plot the full 360 degrees I'll have this I'll have an extra 10 degrees between each of these that should make it a lot more smooth Now ideally I'd need to redo a lookup table for each of these separately because each of these has a slightly different offset and that's enough to make the mechanism jam up as you saw previously. But I have a bit of luck because related to any one servo the other servo can move pretty much any sort of path it needs to. I've got both ser servos moving in a sort of pseudo sine wave so this goes around in a circle but as long as one just goes left to right, the, the range it needs to, I only need to do the lookup table for one of them. So I'll plot a lookup table in um, Open Office, in the math, in the spreadsheet, to apply a sine wave to only this servo. I can then use the push buttons that I've added to the circuit here to move this servo one step at a time through the table. And for each value, for each position, I will move this servo manually with the buttons until this link just drops in place. And then I record the value of this servo. And then I have two sets of values, one from these sine waves that I've added automatically to this servo, and one that I've made myself for this servo. Putting those both together should move this how it needs to be in a circle. Now if that sounds like a lot of extra work, it is. And I did consider getting rid of the servos entirely, using those for something else, and instead using something like a stepping motor and a stepping motor driver to drive just this round. But I would have had to cut new cogs to put on here, it would have hidden this mechanism and it would have made all of this a bit, a bit redundant, which I don't really want to put a lot of effort into making even this one alone, you know. So I'm going to keep the servos, but I'm going to do it manually recode the angles that they need to be from scratch. Right, well, in order for you to see something that's not total failure for this video, I'll show you the code that does this sweep. I'll try and go over it and explain it, and that's gonna be fun because I'm only learning myself, so I'll try and do as best as I can to explain what's going on. Okay, that's printed out. Let's run through this and I'll show you what I'm up to. This looks pretty complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. I want to break it all down. This bit here loads up the servo library, which tells the Arduino we've got a servo attached to it. This gives it a name, calls it my servo. And this one is a variable where we're storing the potentiometer value. So as we turn the potentiometer left and right, we're generating a number. And that number is from 0 to 120, sorry, 1023. We'll need this later on. This bit here, the void setup, that tells our Arduino that the server is attached to pin 5. Finally, void loop is the main part of the program. We start from here, we loop through this, back to the start again, and this will loop continuously until we lose power. 
So this bit here, we've got pot value equals analog read zero. We're basically taking an analog reading from pin zero, which is where our potential amplitude is connected to, and we're getting this number from zero to 1023, and we're assigning it to pot value. Then we're mapping pot value to the range of angles that the server needs. So we've got zero to 1023 here, we're mapping that to 0 to 180 so that gives us our degrees and then we're writing that to the servo here this little bit down here this is just for debugging we take that value and we can print it out on the computer so we attach it with USB and we send the data continuously to the computer and we've got the numbers down in the list so we can actually ignore this bit and this is the main bit here we read the pot value send it to the servo and just loop around continuously like that. So unfortunately that's all the time I have for this week because of problems. Hmm. So if you've not subscribed already then subscribe and hit that notification button so you're up to date with what I'm going to release next. I'll be going to be carrying on with this next Tuesday. Hopefully I can get this moving properly by then. Um, I'm going to try the thing with the sine wave on one of these probably this one and then produce a lookup table for this one and that should work if so we'll have that video up and i'll be one step closer to actually getting this finished once i've done that i can actually start building the timer module to make it tick around once a minute so if you like this video give it a big thumbs up if you didn't like it you know where that button is leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions any questions anything else thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next tuesday have a great week.